I think like if you look at uh, corporate mumbo jumbo and like this is our mission statement and they're oh, like Jesus quality <laughs> service <laughs> teamwork yeah like, yeah oh, okay like I I get it you're a multi billion dollar conglomerate you've got like a bajillion people that work there and now you're just like a massive like meat grinder for your employees and stuff but for on a personal level like you you can't do that right. like and people like cut and paste from those and they're like oh but I've got I've got the buzzwords yeah. and that's what's going to propel me to get people. It's like, no, well, that's you need a story. <laughs> like you need an actual story with substance yeah. and soul to be able to get your message out there. Thanks for being here, Morgan. Absolutely. Do you like how quickly we transitioned there? I, I like <laughs> the, the faster the segue, the better. That's like, right. I tell people I don't do any fancy intros because it's super weird. Yeah. In my in my opinion. Yeah. But uh, no, man, I'm really glad you're here. I've been checking you out on LinkedIn. Uh, really glad that we connected. And you help entrepreneurs, business owners become thought leaders. Yeah. So let's just dive right in. Why should somebody care about being a thought leader? Well, I, I think the the first thing that comes to my mind is just to be a little bit more intentional. And and that's that's the hardest part for people when they get online and they start writing, creating content is like, I don't know how to speak to an audience. I don't know what, I, am I supposed to be like an enter entertainer? Am I supposed to be taking pictures in front of a Lamborghini, like throwing up peace signs at people? Like what, what does it mean to be like this, this influencer? And I think that's what people struggle with is I, I don't want to go all the way and, and go to the, the guru or coach mode. And like, I'm going to build this course for you. And, and so I, I help VCs, entrepreneurs, lawyers, all sorts of folks basically take their unique value prop and the things that they do really well, and then create a category around what they do. And that's the, the some video content, a lot of writing, uh, emails, and, mm -hmm. and just design basically a, a persona for themselves. And a lot of it is there, but most people aren't promoters, right? Like they're not naturally born marketers. Not everybody can is is has that skill set. Yeah. And so I just I just have some conversations with them, and we start writing. And I do some of the ghostwriting myself, um, but but a lot of it is unlocking. Okay, what is it exactly that you are, and how different you are, and what's that special sauce that you have? Um, because a lot of times people get lost in this like blue ocean mentality where, oh, we're all going to make money together. And it's, it's just like this really special place. Cause I'm an attorney and you're an attorney and we can share clients. It's like, no, I, I get my clients to think like, this is a no ocean strategy. You want to be all by yourself. Like you want to create your own thing, your own space, look at what people are doing and then run in the opposite direction of that and, and start to just stand out. Cause I mean, it is all about awareness. Like there's a reason why Gary Vee is effective because he just blasts everyone on every channel. I mean, I and I don't love the like the content free content that he puts out most of the time, like teamwork makes the dream work. And to be a great leader, you have to have vision and things like that. But uh, it's just a matter of building that brand awareness through really, really cool and interesting uh, content pieces and then finding exactly the place that you should put it. So, yeah, uh, there are a lot of really cool things you said there. Do you ever get when you're helping somebody find their vision or like their special, unique, whatever? Yeah. Do you ever what kind of roadblocks do you hit with that? Uh, roadblocks. Uh, the first one I, I would say that people bring up is like, I'm not I'm not anything cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, I, yeah. It's, I, was, I would say that was probably the biggest problem you got to overcome. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't have anything special to bring to the world. I don't know <laughs> uh, what I'm going to say that's going to get anyone's attention. And some of these people have like really deep networks. They've gone to like the best schools. Mm -hmm. They have incredible like backgrounds and people will stand up like in terms of social proof of what they do or what they've done. But they don't they don't go back and use that for anything. Like it's just basically <laughs> sitting on a shelf somewhere. It's like, wait, you got that award or, you know, you made that money or you did this. And they're like, yeah, I did. And it's like, why don't you talk about that? Yeah. Why they, they, that? they don't know why. Yeah. They have no idea. And some of these people have been in their careers for 30 years. Like, and they've, Why? they went to like Harvard law and they're yeah. like, oh yeah, I, I did that once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How is that yeah. bringing up in casual conversation? Like one time you're like, one time you're like, oh, so tell me about yourself. Oh yeah. I went to Harvard law. You're like, and you didn't think you should have brought that up first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and I mean, that's not an exaggeration. Like some of the people that I've run into over the last uh, year and a half that I've been hacking it out alone. I mean, they, they really do have that type of 
uh, background yeah. and they just are not leaning into it. Like yeah. they're not digging into it. How do you convince them to like lean in really like double down? Cause like it took me a minute to do that. So like you, if you see my LinkedIn, if you follow my LinkedIn, but if you've seen it lately, it says like my podcast gets 10,000 listens a week. Mm -hmm. That used to not be on there. I used to like hide my podcast. Yeah. Like, well, over, why, why did you yeah. do it? Why did you hide it? Like it that? was, I, I was deep in like, I don't want to say like corporate, but like startup world. And, uh, that it, mine's kind of a long story. Cause I got too much in my head. I think the short answer is I was way too far in my own head. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's, that's totally true. Is is we get so weighed down and encumbered by like these different priorities and we're, we're worried about what people are going to say about us and like, okay, I have this connection over here. All of a sudden I'm like taking pictures of myself and like, I have my own landing page now. And it's like, I'm really not that important. I'm like, well, actually you are yeah. like, if, if, if you want to become a thought leader, people yeah. have to hear from you. Yeah. And, and there's only one way for that to happen. You got to start talking. Right. Yeah. And then you got to put it somewhere. So I have that same thing when I help businesses go through their podcasts, like produce their podcasts. Who's going to be the face of it? Well, it should be like you, the CEO or somebody. We should like put your face out there. People are going to get to know you Yeah. because it's the old Simon Sinek phrase. It's like people buy you, mm -hmm. right? People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do You're it. You're the most important product yeah. you'll ever sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we love, like we love Cotopaxi because of Davis Smith. That dude's a saint online. Sure. So why wouldn't you go buy a Cotopaxi bag? He, he's, he's like always out there in the middle of like all these children and he's like giving them hugs and they're all crying. But and if like you've ever met him, he's their a, children after. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Well, he's like, but he's like a super genuine. Yeah. No, I, 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 yeah, I mean? I'm joking, but yeah, but no, I, but I understand. But like, that's the kind of thing, right? It's like, you see mm. that and you're like, why wouldn't you do that? And uh, it's just a very, like, I would love to interview Davis one day, but now he's going on a LDS mission Man. and I can't get him. Dang it. It's okay. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I know I, cause I see what you, which, how you, what, what you mean there, right. With like people just, you have to like show people who you really are, especially like in these days when people are doing more business with companies they share values with. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't really enjoy doing business with somebody that I'm not aligned with and more people are, are going that route. And how do you, so I, I kind of want to get into all of this, but you, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of things that that brought this question up. How did you get into this? Like you said, you've yeah. been doing it for like a year and a half or something. Like yeah. That? So I, I, I've been out of my own for a year and a half. Um, and just like a really quick rundown of what I've been doing. Um, I was a Spanish teacher actually, and mo both of my degrees are in Spanish. And so I was teaching during the day and writing curriculum and doing all these things. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. And this is about, <laughs> this is about seven years ago. And I'm like, I, I'm not making any money. I had a few kids at the time that were real young and um, very small amounts of money in the bank. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. And and I'm like to my wife, I'm like, Julie, we got to do something different. And so um, I ended up knocking doors with an alarm company at, like after grad school and like being a Spanish teacher for five years. And so we get in this office up in Seattle and I'm like surrounded by all these 18 year olds, nothing against 18 year olds or anything, but I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, yeah. they're all going out to party after they sell and stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm going home guys, you know, I'm going to yeah. go sleep. But, um, I knocked doors. I was relatively good at it. And then I, I just so happened to knock into the door of, uh, of a chief revenue officer at the Cleveland clinic when I was visiting my parents. And like a year later, he hired me to come be a part of his healthcare consulting company. Oh, so, so what'd you do for him? So basically I was just in these boardrooms with uh, different executives looking good with my suit and tie on and just learning how to be a consultant. I mean, he had been in healthcare for 20 years. He's just like coming right around with me and learn how to do this. And so I was sitting there looking pretty with my suit on. And then he decided while we were out there in Ohio that he was going to come out to Utah and be a part of uh, a healthcare startup, Tula Health. And he said, I hope you'll come with me. This is going to be a big opportunity. I was like, no, man, this is the plan. Like I, we came out here to do this healthcare stuff. I was knocking doors. I was a Spanish teacher a few years ago. And now we're going out to Utah to be uh, a part of this, this healthcare company at Tula Health and just a wild ride, like moving your family across the country a couple of times in, mm -hmm. in a few years. And then they were raising money and the, the co-founder of the company is like, hey, we're raising money right now, but we didn't really bring you on to, to do that. And I was like, yeah, right. Like I'm going to raise money. It's <laughs> so just digital door knocking, right? Like yeah. I'm just going to go out there and prospect and do your thing. And so, uh, I was lucky enough to be a part of their seed and series a rounds and help bring in some money for that. And that really was the moment where I was like, wow, like not just a Spanish teacher, not just a guy yeah. that had his second language acquisition degrees or anything. It was just like, 
this is my life now. And, and after that, um, picked up a couple, uh, side projects and clients and then decided I got to do this by myself. Like I got to go out and build something by myself. Not, not the, the, like, not in the sense that I am a lone wolf or anything and I don't want to build a team or anything, but just the, just the idea that, holy cow, there's all these people out there that are building their dream. They're doing their thing and I can go out and do it. And, and I think the, the impetus for me wanting to do this kind of work and thought leadership and content marketing was I saw a big gap between how people think about their ideas and then how they develop and then go and produce. Mm-hmm. Um, because with early stage startups, it is so much about the story and connecting investors to your energy, your passion, and not so much about like, oh, look, look at the size of this opportunity. It's a like $50 billion <laughs> industry that's about to be this. It's like, no yeah. one's, no one's going to, bite on that. So. Interesting, interesting that you mentioned that because not a lot of people get that, but it, it finally clicked for me. I met the CEO of Blip, mm-hmm. the, the uh, sure. billboards, yeah. um, RJ, and he said that he makes decisions to work with people and, and companies based on three things. And the first one was team. So it was like team, market, and then product. So like what they offered was like third on the list. Mm-hmm. Or, or maybe it flipped, but like, anyway, it wasn't product and it wasn't market. Like that wasn't yeah. the first one. He's like the team. Like if you don't vote, like, and, and that's what I've heard, like in the investor world is like, they really focus on like the team. And if they believe in the vision of like the leaders, sure. have you found that to be the case? I, I definitely think that your ability to speak and communicate and build relationships is, is almost more important than the actual content of a deck or an idea or because <laughs> at the end of the day, you got to execute. And that's what a lot of people can't do is they can't go out and make it happen. And so, which is tough, dude. Oh, I, I mean, it's brutal. Yeah. Like it's, it's so brutal. And even just like when, when I've been working with early stage founders the last couple of years, I mean, in the last two years, the environment has changed so much in terms of like what, what people's appetites are for SaaS and other products. And so, um, <laughs> it's, it's been really hard for, for early stage people to get that. But I, I would just like, that's, that's kind of the thing that carries over from both the startup founders and attorneys or business people is just learn how to tell your story and do it in a way that will actually grip somebody, right? Like yeah. that'll like get them right on the edge of their seat. Yeah. And you can do that through your, your, like your personality and through understanding exactly how you talk to people and things like that. But a lot of it is the digital experiences, which is what I focus on. So tell me, Matt, you leadership. said digital experiences. Yeah. You mentioned before this, like writing and a yeah. lot of stuff like that, but, t- but walk us through like what somebody sh- sh- like how they build their digital experience, what somebody should feel when they're going through a digital experience. I've never heard that. Like, I, obviously when I hear the term, I'm like, Oh yeah, that makes you sense. But I've never heard it. About, like, yeah. yeah. But I've never heard it. It's like, I, I would just say um, the reason why I use digital experiences versus uh, like a brand, self branding or, or that type of thing is because it's so much more than just seeing your picture or seeing like, oh, I made this cool banner on LinkedIn. It's like, yeah, that's cool. And I, I feel like that's what a lot of the gurus and coaches are saying is like, as long as you have those um, graphic design or artistic pieces in place and you like look cool, yeah. then you're going to get clients or like you're going to drive leads. And and I know that this is someone, something that everyone suffers with on LinkedIn is like you get those million DMs a day about how you're going to drive more leads. <laughs> They're like the branding or the marketing or their generation yeah, services and things like that. Um, and, and so I'm fighting back against that a little bit when I think about thought leadership and writing by, yes, it's, it's, it's important to have your, your profile, but like, do you have a portfolio? Do you have a landing page? Do you have a YouTube channel? Do you have some place where people can really get to know you? Because some people are going to bite like really hard right away. They're going to see you and be like, oh man, Dalton's someone I, I need to be working with like right now. But it's it uh, most of the time it's a longer a longer sales cycle like right, they're gonna right. they're gonna say okay i've just liked five posts i went to this thing and i saw them talk here and so it, it's it's it basically digital experience means build an environment around yourself and that's kind of what i'm interested in as, as someone that's building categories or designing categories around people is it's it's just more holistic like it, it has to have uh, an all-encompassing experience yeah. for the people that are viewing them or reading about them. Well, and I, that's how I view branding as well, because I've always, I, my podcast agency tries to push back on the traditional marketing pitch, which is like, we'll do your paid ads. Like it's 5,000 a month for us to do it. And then you got, and then you yeah. got to spend another 10 to make it work. And it's like, right. dude, what the heck? Like, um, but when you run a paid ad and I look at, 
the, I look at XYZ company on Facebook, I get an ad for Facebook. I, I personally don't really click on ads. Like I'll go like research the company a ton, which is like why YouTube is the number one search engine right now. Mm -hmm. Like number two, right. Um, is because like, if I l research your brand and I don't see anything, like I see like two followers on YouTube or like, so I'm like, what the and, heck is and, happening? And you're uh, supposedly going to generate all those leads for me or whatever. That's like, that's my favorite, man. Yeah. Cause do your own research. You're like, Oh yeah. You're like, I there. don't know what you are. You know what I mean? Or like, you know, just the brand in general, just like if I, like I'm getting served and I'm like, dude, you don't have any videos about, you don't have any videos. You paid someone to do all your copy, probably way too much money because uh, I'm yeah. reading your website and yeah. like, I still don't understand what's happening and uh, it's wild. But like, um, you know, when you talk about digital experience, I like how you talk about the depth chart. Mm -hmm. like you got it. Like people should like, you know, you're going to see this, you're going to see this, you're going to see this. And like, it's all going to match. You're going to be saying the same thing. Um, that's, that's very powerful. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have a foundation in place and then you go to build other things on top of your, you know, it's in terms of like developing a strategy because it, it really does start with that unique value prop and, and being that different to where in the sea of sameness, right. You're actually sticking yeah. out. Like you're that little red boat that people are like, Oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. <Right>? Like, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and some people, some people really nail that. And that's, that's what causes those memorable experiences for people as they're searching for you online. And then after the foundational stuff, I mean, you have to experiment, you have to be a tactician, then you layer on more and more. And all of a sudden it's like, oh man, I've got a real thought leadership plan that's all working and it's cohesive. And mm -hmm. I'm starting to see the results that, that I was looking to get. Yeah. So now one of the objections I'm sure you get on like thought leaders just in general, right. Is like that just the phrase thought. Oh, it has so kinda, much. Yeah. It, it kind of just like mm -hmm. turns people off right away. Yep. Um, how do you work through that with a potential client? I, I think people come to the table with a lot of ideas around what a thought leader is yeah, because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. like, am I going to have to get a picture of me on a stage? Like, am I going to have to <laughs> like, cause that's what everybody is doing. I mean, well, I'm yeah. guilty of it too. I, I, and a lot of my LinkedIn content is pretty dry and sarcastic and half the time people are probably <laughs> confused. Like, does Morgan really feel that way? But that's, that's sort of my brand. Um, but yeah, I think one of the, the big objections that people have about thought leadership is that it just means so many different things. And a lot of them are negative, yeah. like almost like I'm a thought leader. I'm more intelligent than you, or I have a better yeah, pedigree yeah. than you, or I've done so many more important things than you. And it's almost like in terms of a, like a social status thing, thought leader here, audience is here. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. and so it's almost like they're looking down on the average person, which I, which I think is just, is a stupid this is a stupid point because everybody that's on social media, pretty much everywhere, and especially on, on LinkedIn, they're trying to validate their ideas. And I, I know that there are some people that are just out there to spam or just to do the traditional thought leader, like what we think of yeah. maybe on the more negative side, but there are so many amazing people doing amazing things. And it's just a matter of like getting eyeballs to their stuff. And LinkedIn is the channel that they're, yeah. that they're doing it through. So it, yeah, I, I see what you're saying with overcoming those objections with, Okay, is yeah. it this type of thought leader or yeah. is it this one? Like, <laughs> like, one like a like, real no, one. Like, yeah. We're actually going to be out there like helping people. Because it's similar things to like, you know, when I tell brands to do a podcast, right? A lot of them is like, oh, well, the big one for me is like, it doesn't make you any money. Oh, man. Yes, you know it does. <laughs> it really does. Yes, it does. I'm like, I'm like, you haven't caught it yet, but like we're in, we're in the creator economy right now mm -hmm. like we're you know i saw a post actually that said um digital marketing is the new traditional marketing yeah where it's kind of like yeah like we're 2023 is not the year for um like running a bunch of pay like i tell small businesses like i don't think you should run facebook ads mm -hmm. or like linkedin ads. i like unless you have like 10 g's to blow on this thing you know um you could run a podcast for way less and get way more rich media, way more written media, way more SEO, all that stuff. And I'm sure you you pitch the same way. Yeah. Because I think people just really need to like get your their face out there, dude. It's not like, you know what I mean? It's crazy to me. Exactly. Well, and I, I even, I have so many stories um, just in the last year and a half to two years of where people bite 
and enjoy things that you would never expect them to enjoy. Um, I mean, yeah, that's so true. I, I made a post about how my kids were eating too much bread. And at the time I was, I was a really poor uh, user of Photoshop. I was not the Adobe Wan Kenobi that I am today. And so I, I made this like vending machine with prison bars and there's like a loaf of bread behind it. And I'm like, I'm going to force my kids to put a quarter in this machine every time they want a piece of bread because it's getting freaking ridiculous. <laughs> They're eating way too much. And people in the comments are like, how dare you try to stop your kids from eating bread? I'm like, this is just a joke. <laughs> like, it's it's not for real. Like, this is just a joke. I'm I'm not actually going to stop my kids from having a piece of toast. Right, right, right. But, but a founder saw that after following me for eight months and yeah. sent me a message and was like, you get me. I'm like, yeah, oh. like, dude. You, you understand what, how, what I'm like, we should work together. And it was awesome. Like it was yeah. a great engagement. We, yeah. I, I found like, uh, his, his assumptions on how we would work together were completely right. I felt like I just knew him. I understood him. Um, yeah. and he brought me on to help pitch some investors and things like that. So it was, it was a really cool experience for me. And it really, it opened up my eyes to the fact like, you have no idea what types of people you're going to get from your content. Mm -hmm. And then, but I, I never, that experience never would have happened if I was just on one platform, think like thinking I was going to find someone through Facebook ads or whatever. Right. Like I was trying different things. I was in an experimental phase trying to figure out exactly how I teach to people. Well, and like being, like being authentic. Mm -hmm. Well, cause like how I spin, I, I say what you say just a little bit differently. I say you're going to connect with, the, when you put out authentic, genuine content, like that, like your post, right. As a, as a joke. And you're going to attract the right audience. Like that guy was your perfect customer yeah. versus yeah. trying to find, trying to convince somebody that they should work for, work with you. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like you're, you put out authentic content. You're going to get the people who are supposed to work with you. Because I think that was the biggest like contra lesson that I learned in business was like, you actually don't want to sell everybody. Like everybody is actually right. not your customer. Exactly. Because, and not because you can't do it or they're not whatever. It's just like, we vibe, dude. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a million people out there. And you can, and you mentioned this in my, cause one of my favorite uh, quotes is where there's no difference, there's no preference. And so you just got to be like that little bit different, right? Like this dude will make a funny joke and that's it. I needed to know that. I needed to know sure. that this dude was real. Sure. And I, I love uh, using card for my landing pages. Yeah, dude. And card is amazing. You can just make a million landing pages if you want to for free. Uh, yeah. It's, no money. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> and one of my landing pages is, uh, is thought leader. It's just thoughtleader.card.co. And it's just uh, me as semi serious Morgan. That's a letter to the busy executive and just walks through and says like, Hey, you're, you've been building other people's stuff. Wouldn't it be nice if you had your own community? And it yeah. just goes through all these things. It's really just like an open love letter to all executives everywhere who want to be a thought leader. And I put that up and literally the next day I got uh, an appointment from it saying, uh, it just spoke to me. <laughs> and this is someone with a PhD um, in, in business strategy who had been operating for 25 plus years. That's insane. And man. they just said, you, you get it. I'm like, I, I guess, I mean, <laughs> I guess. And, and the reason why yeah, I bring it up yeah. is just because it is, is basically my personality on a page. Yeah. Like that's, that's what it, I'm not the best copywriter in the world. I don't have like some of the other qualifications that people might have over me, but I'm just myself on a web page. Mm -hmm. And said, made yeah. it, I made it really easy for the guy to connect with me. So that's the other thing. People make it super hard to do business now. Mm -hmm. Like it's way too hard for me to buy what you're selling. Right. <laughs> like, and if that's the case, like, I don't want to do that, man. <laughs> We're like, not going to be simpatico. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like freaking, I got to figure out who you are. I got to figure out if I should trust you. Like, but then I see something like that and you're like, all right, cool. Like that must, you know, that kind of encompasses everything. And, and, and people are drawn to that. And I love that so much because if we had more of that, we would have more opportunities to like really make a difference in people's lives because you have that connection right off the bat. We're not, yeah. we're not going through, like I was in a management class for my M MBA and you know, we, we're going through, he's taken us through all of these things. Like, so our professor had written a book, he'd done all these things and he was a high ticket consultant and he's showing us his consultant process. And I'm like, damn, bro. I was like, I don't know if this works in any more today, dude. Cause it was yeah. like discovery calls and all these, and I'm <laughs> so like, many layers to like it. holy shit, dude, <laughs> can I meet you as a person and say yes or no? <laughs> right. Jeez, dude. It well, was wild. That, that's what I'm trying to uh, help people understand. Um, both 
my own clients and just people that um, like in terms of like my ungated content, if you can call it that, just the only free stuff yeah. that I'm putting out there is like yeah. when you when you have that first interaction with someone, the re, the 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 reaction you want is like, oh, you're just like I read about, right? Like you, you're exactly <laughs> who I thought you would be. And, it's, and it, you sit there and you're like, whoa, like that's kind of a weird thing to start the conversation with. But it's, it. it's for real. Like mm-hmm. you want them to be 70 percent, 80 percent of the way there so they can make the decision when it comes time to do that. And then yeah. that only comes through just being a creator, yeah. and being OK with it. Just like your face out there, man. Uh-huh. Messing up. When I tell when I sell podcasts to businesses, they ask me about editing and I go, what are you talking about? We're not going to edit this. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take all the ums and right. all those seconds out because like, this is authentic, man. Mm-hmm. People need to hear you run through an idea, mess up, go back and rerun through it the right way. Cause that's what I, that's what people like. Oh, this dude's real. He, he made a mistake, fixed it. I'm in, right? Well, like, they, don't, they don't want the shot to be like them naturally talking. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it like cuts to, <laughs> it's like, you totally know yeah, that, that, that they've cut, been dude. corrected. I mean, that's why yeah. it's called the jump cut, right? It's like, mm-hmm. You're you. I missed everything that it, it took from go from A to B, right? Yeah. Um. And some people like it, and some people don't. But but to be frank, like I don't really like working with people who want like a Marvel Studios production out of their podcast because people want like we're here for genuine conversation. Because I I've heard that before too. People come on my podcast, they're like, "Dude, this sounds like all the time." And I'm like, "Yeah, man," because because we have the best segues here on the show. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> That's why you know we don't mess around over here. No, no, no. But you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I've heard I've heard people say that, and it, and it is a cool thing to be like, yeah, I'm not one person online and another person when we sit on a call. Yeah, you know, right. Like we'll be the same person. And even even too with uh, not just the actual content, but how you look, which I always think I always <laughs> yeah, 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 I think yeah, that yeah. it makes me laugh every time when someone meets me in person. They're like, oh, you look exactly like your picture, right, dude? And 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 you just go how. Like, have you had other, like, who have you talked to that isn't, you know, that doesn't look like themselves on, you know, online or LinkedIn. And I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. You got Manti Teod or something? <laughs> nice. Yeah. 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 Okay. That just, he's a Polynesian brother. Uh, whatever. Yeah. He, uh, he made so much money off that Netflix special. He doesn't need me. That's right. Um, he doesn't need the shout out, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> But dude, for real though, isn't that funny? Like yeah. you do look, so, you, you don't look like your picture or whatever. Um, that's wild, man. That's yeah. And wild. I think that's, that's the key component to the thought leadership that I'm trying to uh, be a cheerleader for yeah. is the, the realness, the authenticity, uh, well, yeah, and, embracing and, exactly who you are and being okay with the fact that you've got some dirt, right? You have to embrace your dirt and understand that maybe it's a yeah. knowledge piece, or maybe it's, I haven't gotten to this level uh, in terms of our revenue or whatever. And I, I think that's, that's a hard thing for people too, is, mm. is when I come in to explain what I do from the content marketing or from the sales side, it's, there's sometimes a hesitation to expose themselves. Mm. And I think, yeah. I think that's, that's a scary thing for a lot of people. I, but have you read the book? It's a really famous negotiating book, but Chris Voss never split the difference. Yeah. Took but, his master class is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Uh, he goes through the book, the accusation audit and yeah. how it's actually really powerful. And I've been doing like, I read his book and he put a term on what we were doing, but all the good salespeople do that, right? Like we learned yeah. it. We learned about it. We learned that tactic watching Eminem's eight mile. Mm-hmm. It was like, dude, uh, yeah, I'm not the best. Like I remember getting uh, a landing, a big sales coaching deal from a Facebook post that said like, I know I'm not Grant Cardone. I know I'm not Chris Voss. I don't have millions of followers. There's absolutely no reason you should follow me other than good luck trying to get a one-on-one call with Chris Voss. Yeah. And he was like, dude, that was it. Right. Yeah. It's very similar. You know what I mean? But it's like, yeah. It's like, yeah, dude, I don't have, I don't have 20 million people in my course. I don't even have a course like, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and uh, Grant Cardone has been in sales longer than I've been alive, but, uh, but I have something to teach you and I think it would work. And uh, it, it's a really, it's actually super powerful. And I'm sure you, you spin it like that when you pitch. Yeah. It. I mean, it's, it's essentially what Emerson says. I think it was Emerson anyway, where he says, I learned from every man that I meet, basically yeah. I'm totally butchering the quote, but like <laughs> good, every yeah. man is my equal in some way. And because of that, I learned from him. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's what I love to do with all my clients is like, yeah, you've got, you've got unique understandings, but there's even more that we can come to understand through the act of creating things yeah. through production and testing out what your ideas are. Cause some of them are going to suck yeah. and yeah. it's okay. Like <laughs> right. it's okay yeah. for your ideas to not land because <laughs> out of all of that, 
that doesn't land, you're still getting eyeballs. You're still building awareness about what you're mm -hmm. doing. And we're getting that feedback from your super users and your super consumers, if you can call it that, because mm -hmm. there will be a lot of people that rally around you as you go through that process, because deep down inside the lurkers and those that are in the shadows, they want to be doing what you, what you're doing currently. Yeah. And that's, that's why they're going to latch onto your energy. And, you know, I, I've always heard that, right? Like people wish they could be in your spot. And I never understood that until I had an experience where, you know, a lot of people, you know, I met a, I met a guy who had like an underground podcast and never put anything out. He had like, I was like, dude, what are you doing? Why do why don't you do like he was trolling me and I knew that he had it. And I was like, <laughs> just put it out, man. Yeah. Like, um, but people do, but he's like, no, dude. And, and one of the things he said was like, uh, if, cause if I find somebody like me online, I, I don't know how I could take it. And that's also when I learned, about the negative side of getting big. <laughs> it's like, somebody's going to hate you. Somebody's yeah. going to take it out of context. Somebody's not going to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I put a, I put out a, a short the other day that was, I was on a podcast with Jaron Erickson. He's the owner of Do sales dojo or yep. dojo or whatever. Yep. And uh, I put like a lot of great business owners. It happens like by accident, almost like they just stumbled upon it. Like they were like, they, they just tried. And some guy wrote like two or three people wrote, so what, I'm just supposed to wait around for something to happen in my business. And I'm like, well, okay, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I get how you could misconstrue that, but I just meant like, no, if you keep trying, like something will happen. Well, kind of like your story, right? Like you just knocked into the, dude, the dude's door. Like, how did that happen? Yeah. I, I, it was funny because when I went and, and tried to sell him an alarm system, he had like an old Medtronic system with cables hanging off the walls and stuff. And I was like, this is a done deal. Like he's got the money. I know he's credit, like he's going to have a great credit score. Like it's, it's all going to, it's in the bank, man. And then at the end he's like, nah, I'm good. I'm like, what? Like, there's no way. Yeah. And so we actually just talked for probably an hour and a half in his house and he just, you know, just gave me the rundown on what he was doing, asked about me, asked about my family, whatever it was. And mm -hmm. I, I think that the, the key for me, uh, the key learning, I guess, as I made that transition from being a Spanish teacher now to, to run my own thing is just keep saying yes. Like keep, Dude, that's keep accepting it. things like little yeah. things, big things, free things, like whatever it is, just yeah. say yes, put a dang smile on your face and do it Yeah, because you have no idea what is going to happen to you long term and i and that's the hardest thing i think for people that want to be creators and artists or whatever and mm -hmm. then also tied into thought leadership is it takes time to do it mm -hmm. and people don't want to do that they <laughs> like just don't like i can't i i can tell you that a lot of the conversations i've had are like morgan can you just do this can you do it for me right when mm -hmm. it, when it comes to the thought leadership plan or strategy like, can, yeah. can you just do it it's like you've got to be involved like, yeah you have I to be the face right? i will not be <laughs> doing 40 hours of work a week just for you yeah you've got to be involved yeah and that that's tricky well and and not only that but like it doesn't work no it right? has like, no soul yeah like if you're doing it if you have yeah. some ghostwriter just operating by him or herself like it's it's really tough yeah that, it's it's no fun um dude that it's so funny because a lot of people, we are just in that kind of like, I just need you to do it because a lot of people have been just so either like burned in my experience or like just exhausted with the process that just hasn't worked. Or marketing companies in general. Oh, dude, Mark, I, <laughs> listen, my best friend, my co-founder, one of my co-founders in this pro podcast agency is, a, is an amazing marketer. And I tell him that shit all the time. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm sick of this. That's dude. what happens on every exploratory <laughs> call. It's like, there was this one marketer I worked with. And I'm like, oh man, yeah. every time yeah, every I have time a conversation like, with somebody. It's like, they charged me this, made me pay this. And like, so I'm looking, if you could do like, dude, I could go down like half of what you're going to charge me. Yeah. If you could do that, I'm like, no, what? <laughs> Just because you had some horrible experience, like now you expect me to come in super low. So right. anyway, well, and not only that, but it's like, they just, people just don't understand. Like they, they think that they can, uh, like, I think people get caught up in two traps. Cause I love when you said, just say yes, because a lot of people listen to Gary V and they're like, and Gary V or like Ryan holiday will be like, just say no. Right. And tied to that, find your niche. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, it's, yeah. I, that's a grinder, man. I for me, that. I just start I like crying when I hear that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. I, cause it's super anyway, but like you hear these, 
And I'm like, yeah, like they can say no. I'm like, so I'll make you a deal, Morgan. You can say no to every deal when you've got five New York bestsellers and you can yep. live on a ranch in San Antonio by yourself for the rest of your life. Yeah. Then you can say no. For us right now, though, dog, we got to say yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then the other thing is like people get that they read a they read a. Uh, a leadership how to make a million dollars book and it says like outsource everything you don't know and i think that's a terrible idea yeah because then you end up with a marketing company who because uh, i don't think marketing companies are malicious i want to say get that right out like i don't think they're doing anything wrong the communication's not there you got a ceo who's like i don't want to learn i don't care about it you do it right and then you got these marketing people who aren't sales guys who are saying like okay well we'll just do everything that we've this worked for everybody else in the past and that's not the best way to do it. Right. Yeah. So you don't you want to be 1% better yeah. than everybody else. Right. And so you have this boom, this big old clash because like now these people don't know, they don't care to know. Now you got this person who thinks they're just wasting money and you're like, dang, you got to know something about marketing before you hire a marketing team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Have, you gotta have a plan, dude. And I, I think, I think everybody should go through that. And the great thing is, is when you're writing online and creating things, it's a good testing ground for that, I for that, that process is, you, you become a little bit more of a generalist. You have to take the burden on by yourself, yeah. whether, whether, whether you want to or not, like <laughs> you might not have the money to be able to afford some of those extra services that you could give to somebody else. But just going through that struggle, I think, I think is so important for people. Yeah. Well, and, and how are you supposed to work with someone like yourself, right? Like Morgan and never have tried to put your messaging out on paper ever. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's even harder. That's that's the best is when someone like that then yeah. has like a checklist of ideas on what should happen. And it's like, you're like, okay. I throw out things and they're like, well, actually, we should do it this way. I'm like, well, if you already know, <laughs> why haven't you been doing it? Like, yeah, why yeah. haven't you been actually putting yeah. yourself out there? Right. It's like you, you don't know. I mean, I hate to say it, but <laughs> yeah. like you really don't know what the message should be. Like, you don't know what category and you don't know how to sell to your people. You don't know how to build a community like we got to go through this experimentation yeah. phase together because yeah, because because been like you said, like I call it the uh, I call it the polka dot car. I sold cars for a long time, and we were with this lady, and she we were showing her every car that I thought she'd like. Yeah, and finally I was like, but hey, before you leave, um, or no, she said she said I'm leaving. I said all right, I'm gonna walk with you, um, and where I go outside and we pass this super ugly purple Volkswagen bug that was like five grand. It was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And she looked at it, her eyes got super wide and she's like, why didn't she show me that? I go, what are you talking about? She's like that car. And I'm like, you want that one? She's like, turned around, walked inside, bought it right there. Wow. I was like, ah, it's the purple Volkswagen, dude. <laughs> like it's a purple, but like, like what you said, right? Like it's a purple, like you never know mm -hmm. until you just like get out there and start showing people everything you got. <laughs> I, I think, I think your point of communication too, um, with, with marketers or, or people that are just in this space, uh, in general, it's like the, the quality of the conversation has to be there. The feedback loop has to be there. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I talked to, um, a dentist of all people months ago and they just said, I have no idea what they're doing for me right now. And they are referring to the, the marketing company. I said, how much are you shelling out for them? Oh, four grand a month. Like, how long, how long have you been paying them about nine months? I said, what, what are the results? Like, yeah, what'd they do? I, I don't, they, he didn't really know. And I, and I just felt like that. I wonder how often that happens is we just don't get in the conversations. And I, and I think into those good conversations, I think it's, yeah. It's, it's two ways, right? Because the, the marketing company from like an ethics in my mind, anyway, an ethical standpoint says like, this isn't working. And then it's up to the owner too, to be like, yeah. you're right. It's not working. We, we yeah. shouldn't do business together <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah. I just actually had yeah. that with a client today. They're like, they're like, I don't know if this is working. And I was like, I'm going to stop you right there. It's totally not working. And we yeah. should, fi we got one more month to figure this out. And if we can't do it, then I'll fire me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> then I'll yeah. fire myself. You don't have to do it. Right. Because, uh, because yeah, I think, but that's also why it's a little more tangible when you have somebody like yourself or like you give them. So, Cause like most of the time marketing is like vanity analytics, vanity metrics. Yeah. Right. Like, Oh, so many people saw it. And I'm like, eh, okay, cool. That, that's <laughs> nice. We don't want to grow an audience. We want to monetize an audience. We want to actually make some cash. Like well, that'd be good. And not only that, but like, if I wanted a thousand people, like, cause I, then I'll ask business owners that I'm like, all right. So a million people saw your Facebook ad and all they saw was a Facebook ad. 
Could you imagine if a million people watched your YouTube video? Oh yeah. That's so diff- different. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's different. You know, and so you can tell me that a million people saw your Facebook ad, but I want a million people to see your face and your story, right? Yeah. And and not feel like you just interrupted my Facebook video with this dumbass paid ad and now I hate you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that pisses um, me off. Right? Unless it's liquid death, then we all want to watch the ads. That's right. Yeah, that's and, right. That, and then we want to t- make a but million it, <laughs> LinkedIn posts about how those grandmas riding Holy around in the car crap. were great. Talk about <laughs> talk about a brand that talk about a brand that like doesn't give a shit about like they, they are care. going for their people. They're yeah. going for their people to get this shirt. I had to. Th- have you ever been on there, done their whole thing? I have you know, Like I, I love liquid death, buy it all the time. Don't have it here. Cause it wasn't at my store this time, but I, I usually do. Um, but if you ever go online and buy something, they'll, they'll give you a free t-shirt, but in order to get the free t-shirt you signed, like, I think they actually had like a lawyer write up of like a fake contract to like sell your soul. Mm-hmm. It's like you sold your soul to liquid death. So this is my sold my soul over. On, on the latest one they have when that when that teapot smashes down. <laughs> I know that there's like all the ridiculousness before that, but yeah. for whatever reason, just like the fact that they've been able to understand exactly who they're speaking to and then have that teapot smash yeah. smash down at the end for their little yeah. tag at the end. I think that was great. And I and um <laughs> I'm probably the only person that thinks that I part of the the, the the bit was good. Um but I, I it goes back to the fact of like knowing exactly who you are, exactly what you stand for and exactly what you're saying on a consistent basis. Because like, even when people have asked me and asked my clients, Hey, what do you do? Yeah. It's like, well, I'm a, I'm a this or I'm a that, or like they they don't know, they don't have their 30 second pitch. And for me, like what I've just discovered recently is like, that's the crux of everything that I do. I help executives, VCs, attorneys, whoever it is, become thought leaders through doing these things, X, Y, Z. These are the results that I've had. Boom, boom, boom. And, And if you don't have that, if you're not able to articulate that, and then yeah. you're going about and you're trying to uh, run your business or yeah. make money, whatever, like whatever. <laughs> if you don't know that, then you're just kind of stalled, right? Yeah. You might pick up some clients and you might be like, okay, things are good, but they just go to the next level when you can concisely and, and really just get into the meat of what you do and liquid death. They, they know what they do, right? They know Those guys, man, they're freaking awesome, dude. Because, and, and theirs is just like, death to water or I mean a uh, death to plastic who would have thought like uh, I used to do they used to be like an unofficial sponsor where we do like we just do taste testing but they're one of the ones that's like man liquid death is like it's not even and you know what's crazy is like I've said this before but it's not like not even the best water yeah you know what I mean? Like, I can't tell the difference. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Sorry, liquid death. Yeah. Right, right. But they know that too, though. But they <laughs> yeah. know, they yeah. know. And they're not ashamed of, because you're not buying water at that point. You're buying death to plastic and the cool stories on the cans and the boxes, those cool stories on the boxes. Yeah. My son won't let me throw any of those boxes away. So we just have liquid death boxes everywhere in my house because he just loves to play with them. So it's an upgrade from the cardboard boxes that <laughs> when you buy them all their presents. Yeah, and, and yeah, thank God. I'd rather have a bunch of liquid death boxes than Amazon boxes. Now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Dude, Amazon, they love our house, man. They just have like a truck that sits outside of our house, it seems like, and drops stuff dude, off every day. Cool. Well, dude, I know getting an and, and by the way, and talking to an owner for the first time who's never written anything down about their messaging. I think I've, I don't do like what you do, but I've, I've been in those conversations before and I'm like, you know, they're telling me and I'm like, man, you got to clean that up, dude. Cause I know what yeah. you do and what you just told me is not that. <laughs> yeah. That is the most dry thing that you've ever said. in your life, mm-hmm. dude. And I, I think, I think like, if you look at uh corporate mumbo jumbo and like, this is our mission statement and they're oh, like, Jesus, quality <laughs> service, <laughs> teamwork. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Like I, I get it. You're a multi-billion dollar conglomerate. You've got like a bajillion people that work there. And now you're just like a massive, like meat grinder for your employees and stuff. But for on a personal level, like you, you can't do that. Right. Like, and people like cut and paste from those and they're like, Oh, but I've got, I've got the buzzwords yeah. and that's, what's going to propel me to get people. It's like, no, well, that's you need a story. <laughs> like you need an actual story with substance yeah. and soul to be able to get your message out there. Well, and what I tell people is like, yeah, that's the problem. You picked buzzwords, dude. I swear. If you tell me that you give me value one more time, 
<laughs> I'm yeah. going to lose my <laughs> Yeah. Like, I'm going to provide you value. So much like, value. Stop it. Stop. Don't say that word. Like, if I get that word in a pitch, I'm out, dude. Yeah. I'm like done. And not, not yeah. that I have any money to spend on anybody anyway. <laughs> either <laughs> it's an easy out for me. <laughs> you, either that or when they say, I see you're a professional in your field. That's the other, yeah, that's like, the other message I get all the time. Like, Damn it. <laughs> really? Thank you, yeah. sir. Thank the, you. The system, the system put you in front of me on LinkedIn. <laughs> Well, and, and, and not only that, but like, um, it's like you, you see value everywhere. You see culture everywhere. You see all of these buzzwords, right? We're in it for the people. Yeah. 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 It's like, no, I actually, the, one of the leaders I respected the most got up in, in a sales meeting one time and he's like, we're not a family. No, yeah. Yeah, That's a big one. He's like, we're not a family. We are a high performance sports team. And he's like, and if you're not cutting it, you're out. Yeah. And I was like, thank Gandhi. Thank you for saying that. Because like, you're not I my wanted, second cousin once removed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Cause I'm like, because I feel the same way. Right. Like I'm not putting in a time off request. I'm telling you when I'm not going to be here. Right. Like, and, and, or, or, and that's just one of the many examples, but like, yeah, I was so refreshed when I heard that. I was like, oh, thank goodness. And then I was like, oh, he's probably going to fire me. <laughs> and yeah. then he quit. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think thought leadership really is uh, having the mentality that if it's not legendary or if it's not going to really change how people perceive us, we shouldn't put it out there. Yeah, like I, I, I think that's kind of like a guiding star for people that want to get into creating things online or putting yourself out there. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, the argument, I guess, back to me would be, well, Morgan, I can't come up with genius level ideas every time. Then I would produce nothing. Sure. But I mean, at the same time, it's like. You you have to fight back against some of the things that you're talking about. Right. Where it's like this, this nonsense. I know it does nothing for anyone. Like it's not <laughs> it's not impacting anyone's life 